In this video I'm going to show you how to draw the right side view of the tool slide. And uh, so the way I'm going to begin is by drawing a rectangle that represents this rectangle we see right here which is 3 inches by 0.88 inches. So the first thing I want to do is select the rectangle command. I'm prompted to select the first corner so I'm going to pick right here at this corner of the miter box and I'm going to move to the left and up so you can see the direction that I want to go. Now because I'm moving to the left on the x-axis I'm going to type minus 3 and then type a comma and then type 0.88 for the positive uh, y value of that rectangle and then press enter. So it drew a rectangle that's 3 inches in this direction 0.88 here. Now the next thing I want to look at over here is look at this mess of all these dimensions but there's one dimension right here that says radius or R1.09 and I can see that the center for that radius is located right in here and that that radius comes all the way out to the edge and then swings all the way around so the radius of 1.09 gives me the largest arc on this shape that I have to draw. So let's look and see where this radius of 1.09 is located at. Well, from the top edge of my rectangle here, it tells me that it's 1.38 inches up. But how far over from this corner would it be? Well, in this case, the only dimension that I have is this radius of 1.09. If I were to take this arc and this radius you see right here and rotate it all the way to where it were horizontal, the distance from the center of that circle or arc to the edge over here would also be 1.09 inches. So if I were to measure from this corner I would come over 1.09 and I would come up 1.38. So that's exactly what we're going to do. We're going to draw a circle that has a radius of 1.09 and we're going to locate it from this corner and uh, that's what I'm going to show you next. So the first thing I want to do is come over to my circle command pick on the down arrow and choose center radius because I'm going to define the center and the radius of that circle. Now I'm in the center radius I'm sorry the circle radius option here and I'm going to snap off of this corner right here to locate the center of that which means that I need to type from F R O M and press enter. At that point I'm prompted for a base point so I'm going to come over here and pick on this corner here. Now remember when we use from, the key is to type the at symbol first. So I'm going to hold down shift and t the to key, which gives me the at. And from this corner, I'm going to move to the left, so that's a negative 1.09. So I'm going to type minus 1.09, comma, and then I want to give it the height, which is a positive height of 1.38, and press enter and uh, now I'm prompted for the radius which is 1.09 and press enter. Now the next thing I want to do is draw a line from the corner of the rectangle that's tangent to this circle that I just drew. So I'll go over and select my line command and I'm going to snap to the endpoint right there of that, of that uh, top line of that rectangle. I'm going to come over here and I want to make sure that I don't get the quadrant object snap. I want the tangent object snap and you can see that it's telling me it has the tangent and the uh, quadrant looks like a diamond. The tangent looks like a circle with a line across the top. So I'm just going to pick right there and then press escape. I need another circle from the quadrant here down to this corner right here. So that's what I'm going to do next. I'm going to pick on the line command I'm going to pick on quadrant and I'm just going to come straight down to that corner and pick right there and then press escape. Alright, so things are looking pretty good here. The problem I have right now is I still have this full arc or this full circle so I need to trim it from here to here. So let's go up to the trim command and remember when we pick on trim we want to press enter which makes everything a cutting edge and then all I have to do is come and pick on that circle in this area anywhere below you know it's halfway point or uh, I guess it's quadrant over there so I'm just going to pick right there. Alright I've trimmed that out. Now I want to draw a circle, a smaller circle that has a diameter of 1.25 but has the same center 
as that circle I just drew. So I'm going to come back to the circle option up here, pick on circle on the down arrow, and pick center diameter because this time I know my diameter is 1.25. So I'm picking center diameter. And now I want to find the center point for this arc that I have up here, but you see nothing's lighting up and showing me where that is. But if I move near that arc, it will light up. I'll see a little plus sign. That would be the center point. I'm going to come back over there and pick right there. And at this point, AutoCAD is asking me for the diameter of that circle, which is 1.25, and I'm going to press Enter. So I have most of this drawn. I need to have a slot that's cut right through the center of this. And I look at that slot, and I look at these two dimensions, and I can see the total width of that slot is 0.25. And the slot is located off of this center by 0.125. So it's actually 0.125 is half of 0.25. So I'm going to do this by drawing a construction line. So I'm, I'm not going to use the construction line command. I'm just going to use a regular line. I'm going to pick on line. And I want to come over here and snap from the center of this circle. And I want to just draw this straight up. Now, I have uh, object track on, so I can draw something that's 90 degrees and know it will go exactly uh, vertical if I do this. So I'm going to pick right there and then press Escape. Now, if I offset this line, 0.125, to the right, that will give me the right side edge of this slot. So I'm going to go and find my offset command. Here it is, offset. When it asks me for the offset distance, I'm going to type 0.125 and press Enter. I'm going to pick that circle, and then I just move anywhere to the right and pick again, and it offsets that 0.125. Now I know that 0.125 is half of 0.25, so if I come back and pick on the original line I drew and pick anywhere to the left, the total distance from this line to this line on the opposite side over there is 0.25. So I'm going to press Escape. I'm going to use my Trim command again. I'm going to pick on uh, Trim, press Enter, and uh, I'm going to pick this line and this line and this line. And then I'll show you a trick. If you pick to the right of these lines and just come across and only, only cross those lines coming to the left and pick, it will select all three of those lines and trim them out. Okay, I'm going to zoom in a little bit so you can see what I have here. I can trim here and I can pick right here and trim that and I can pick here and pick here which will trim that. But it does leave this line behind so I'm going to pick on the line and then go pick on erase. <coughs> Excuse me. I could have also uh, selected delete instead of erase. I'm missing one line that comes right across here, and that would project from this corner here where the chamfer is in the front view. So I'm going to go back to the line command, and I'm going to come over here and just put my mouse on that corner until it says end point. I'm going to follow the dashed line across. I'm going to pick at the first intersection and pick at the perpendicular and then press escape. Now, in the first video I made, I said that we would find out the height of the front view by projecting from the right side view, so that's exactly what we're going to do now. <clears throat> I'm going to pick on the line command. I'm going to put my mouse right there at the top of that arc. I'm going to follow my dash line across, and when I get to that point, I'm going to pick. I'm going to come across and pick again, and then press Escape. Now, I can just trim these by picking on Trim and Enter. And I can do that trick again. If I pick from, if I just pick here, move my mouse to the right and pick again, I mean, sorry, to the left and pick again, that will cross those two lines and it will trim them. Now I'm going to undo that just to show you the other way to do it. If you pick on trim and press enter, then you could just come and pick and pick and get rid of those that way and press escape. The other thing that I need are the hidden lines for this hole that runs through this feature over here on this side and now I can project those from this view over here. So I'm going to make hidden my current layer and then I'm going to pick on the line command and I'm going to start by snapping to the quadrant right here at the bottom of that circle. Now it may show a midpoint like mine is but 
it's the same difference. It's, it's the same thing. You, could, you may see a diamond for the quadrant. So I'm going to pick right here, come across. I'm going to pick perpendicular to there, and then pick right there and press Escape. Now, when I did that, you can see that I have a line going all the way across. So I'm going to pick on that line, and then I'm going to pick right here on this script. You see that blue box? I'm going to drag it over here, and then I'm going to pick again, and then press Escape. Let's try that again drag it over to here and pick. There we go. Now let's do it again. I'm going to, this time I'm going to project from this corner straight across. I'm going to pick on the line command. I'm going to put my mouse there and just park until it says, should tell me endpoint. And let's see, for some reason it's not wanting to select my endpoint. Let me just try it again. I don't know why it's not selecting my endpoint, but that's okay. I'm going to pick I'll go perpendicular here. I'm going to pick on this guy and just delete that guy out right there. So uh, usually you don't get that line across. I don't know why that <laughs> happened, to tell you the truth. Okay, so I need a center mark on this and I need a center line through this hole here. So I'm going to pick on the down arrow and go pick on the center layer. And then I want to come over here and pick on this tool right here. This is the uh, center mark. If you don't have your dimension toolbar open, you can actually type D I M C E N and press enter. But I'm going to pick on this and I'm just going to come over here and pick on this. And by picking on the smaller one, you can see the kind of center mark that it draws and how far out it comes. Now I want to show you something. If I delete that guy out and I pick on the center mark, but I pick on the larger arc. I get a larger center mark that comes all the way out past the edge here, which is really what I want. And in fact, I'm going to drag this center mark back to, let's see if I can drag it back to right there on the edge, and then pick on it again, and hold down with my pick button and drag out and type point .25 and press enter. So what I'll want to do is make sure that this comes out point .25 past the edge of this arc. I'll actually shorten this one so it only comes 0.25 past the edge. This one should come 0.25 past the edge of the top arc here. And this one should come at least 0.25 past the edge of the circle. Some people go ahead and extend that out. Sometimes it gets extended because there's going to be a dimension added to it. All right, so over here I need a center line that runs all the way through. So I'm going to pick on my line command. And because I'm on the center layer, I should just be able to come right here park on that. This time it's working. It's telling me it's found the endpoint. I'm going to follow that across. I'm going to pick here and then I'm going to come over and pick right there and press escape. I want to pick on that and then I'm going to pick and hold down with my pick button and drag it in this direction and then I'm going to let go of the pick button and type 0.25 and press enter. I'm going to pick at this end and hold down and drag it in that direction to the left. Let go and type 0.25 and press enter and then press escape. So now my right side view is finished with the exception of the hidden lines for the hole that goes through it. And my front view is finished except for the, the two holes that go through here and the hidden lines and center lines I need from those. But in both cases, I'm going to project those from the top view. So the next video, I'm going to show you how to draw the top view.